If you do believe in something and you give it 100%, it can happen. I knew that as a team we could beat England. I knew as a team we could beat France. I knew if we did that, we could win the Grand Slam. We take it to them. There is so much at stake and you can see on those faces the emotion of what this day means. I think we will be remembered as the team that had the belief behind ourselves and the right team in place to do it, to create history. Ireland are the Grand Slam champions. Very tight game. There was new combinations, uh, a couple of new girls in new positions, and uh, yeah, it was it was tight and uh, worryingly tight. I've been playing with the Irish national squad for a few years now, and I'd never actually won in Wales, so I, we knew kind of going over that it was going to be really difficult. But we didn't play well at all. She goes for the line and gets in for the try. Rosie Fletcher and Wales are back in it. Another opportunity and the crossfield kick here. I think back to that now, I suppose it was, it was crucial enough. Lucky enough, I got there in time and reacted. If that had been 0.5 seconds later, something equivalent, that would definitely have been a try. I suppose it set the tone for the whole campaign, actually, those type of things, because I think for years and years and years, we've been building towards what we've just achieved. And it always does come down to those small little margins and those small little things. So yeah, it kind of definitely did set the tone. We knew there was more in us. It just was a matter of coming and kind of that bit of momentum then came at the end to get that final try and then to win the game. I remember praying that there would there would be a winning try. Even though we were we were struggling, I knew that there, there was a there was a try in us. We were really under pressure in the last five minutes. And we produced probably one of the best tries we scored in the whole campaign for Gillian to go over in the corner. It was an unbelievable team try. It was Mazzy. Did brilliant to fix the defender and just popped it after me. I didn't have too much to do, but I managed to get it down anyway. That was the only job I had to do when I managed to do it. To go away from home, only beating Wales for the second time ever in our history, but not particularly playing well, but we got away with the victory. I knew there was something about this team that they had the grit to dig themselves out of a hole. And um, so I was absolutely delighted. Even then I thought this could be the start of something special because we had no divine right to win that game and the grit and the metal that we showed to go in and, and collect all those points was, um, it was brilliant. Personally, it was my goal from, from day one was always to beat the English. I, I, as a coach, that's, I'd be happy if I, if I retired and I beat England. I think every Irish man would say that. I think we knew as a squad that we, we, we could beat them. There was an aura of belief that, you know, that we knew that we, we, we had the takings of England. I felt it. I felt it before, the war, through the warm-up. I felt it was the start of the match. And, you know, we really put them from the very first kickoff. We put them under such pressure. I knew we had them early on. We knew we had, there was something special going to happen. It was the most phenomenal game in the world. It was a really eerie game. It was one of those kind of flow games that I think athletes speak about and that nobody wanted to even talk on the pitch because everybody was just in the zone and on the same page and all of the right things were happening at the right time. It was a really, really phenomenal experience. Lynn Cantwell to Nora Stapleton inside the 22. That's a good run. She finds Alison Miller. She's gone for the line. It's a hat-trick for Miller. Obviously, it was a personal highlight scoring three tries. Um, a funny, it's a funny thing that I'd imagined that morning scoring three tries a few hours before the game and I put it out of my head saying don't be ridiculous, just get through the game. But I look back now and I remember, geez, I actually thought about that that morning and it actually came true. I just remember coming in at half time and we were 20 nil up and every, every time we scored and we were on the pitch I was going, uh uh, this isn't right, they're going to come back, they're going to come back, because they always do. But I think at half time we knew we were on something special, could see it in people's eyes that they knew that we were on for something and we kept going the way we were going. And even with the subs, there was no let up. To actually beat them without them scoring was just a great achievement. And it was really important for me personally as I was only on the, the pitch. And to be on there under such great pressure, we had, I think we had our full bench on at that stage. I mean, everyone was throwing their body on the line just to say that you beat England and they hadn't put up any score against them is an amazing achievement. I'm the defence coach, so I'm, I was delighted because four and a half minutes, 39 phases long, defending against England to hold them out for zero, the last four and a half minutes of the game was just extraordinary. 
Um, so I think the zero was, was the best part of it, to be honest. I think that gave us a massive, massive boost in the whole campaign, if anything, that was the turning point. It's just an incredible relief, you know, I, like my first cap was against England in Worcester and we lost 79-0. Relief was, was the overriding emotion, to be honest. And then just complete pride in what we've done, you know, just that belief that, yeah, we can now. Two years previous, I think I got my first start against England and I had my ribs broken. You know, we trundled back in the scrum. As a prop, you never want that to happen. And to be able to get the nudge on them and beat them and beat players that we played two years before was huge. It's just a great debut and I still boast about I'm the only player who's never lost a game to England on the team. <laughs> And then a triple crown suddenly came into play and it came on us really quickly. And the girls, you can see in our, in our first 20 minutes, I think we had some like seven, seven or eight uh, unforced errors. And that's just not us. The girls were just very, very, very nervous. I suppose at that stage, there was pressure on us, but we were putting pressure on ourselves. Um, and it kind of told in the first half performance over there. But we regrouped at half time and, you know, we put together the way we wanted to play. And, and we got, I know some people might think that the scoreline flattered us based on the first half, but our second half was really the way that we play. That was the first time where we had people that had come over for the men's game and just literally got a bus out to where the match was and decided to come watch it, which, you know, had never really happened to us before. So, you know, it's starting to roll and it was starting to get a bit popular, which is brilliant. We met an old lady and her husband over in Scotland and they had never been to a women's rugby match before and they had come down to that England match that night. I don't know why, I think they were doing nothing and they had flown to Squ Scotland two weeks later to come over and see us because they enjoyed it so much. And to think like they had no involvement in rugby but just because they enjoyed watching it they came over to support us and we were, we were joking, we were like they're our first actual supporters because everyone else has to come because we're telling them to come, <laughs> you know. I used to go over to Scotland myself to support so I, I remember going over and you'd be delighted with the win over in Scotland, but this was something extra special. It was a Triple Crown, it was us saying we're here and we're, we're ready to take on big nations. To win the Triple Crown was fantastic, but we actually didn't play that well. And I remember finishing the game and looking up and, and myself and, and Joy and myself and Fee, I just said, Fee, I wasn't happy with that at all. Um, and she's like, yeah, neither was I, you know, but okay, let's, let's address that in the next one. It wasn't huge celebrations or anything. We were very much focused on the next step. But it was, it was satisfaction. Came back to the hotel and we, we spoke about it and spoke about what we were now on, on the road to achieve, you know, like a Six Nations and a Grand Slam were definitely in sight. I remember it was cold and misty, but still I, I remember just looking around and everyone was just fired up, ready to go, ready, ready for the battle against the French. The French are always so hard to compete against. You know, it was, it was a very tense match because we both knew what was at stake and, you know, we both potentially could have won in the Six Nations. We were undoubtedly the underdogs going into the French game. They just came off a massive uh, win against England in Twickenham, so their, their tails were up and we knew exactly what was coming down our road. I think a bit of pressure is good and I think it's whether you rise to that pressure or not that is the thing and I think the way we played against France and the way we met them toe to toe was definitely a testament to the girls and the mental state the squad were in. The French game was just a battle. It was just an incredible battle. And it was one of those games that you'll never ever forget for the rest of your life. It was incredible. It just to and fro and to and fro. And because we were against people who were really pushing us and that was where that kind of grit and determination and that will and that want to win for each other really was shown that night. I've never heard such noise in my life. And that, I think, galvanized us. And uh, like I said, we built on that. Once we settled in, I started ticking over. I think at half time, I knew we were gonna win. I wasn't, my, my belief never wavered. I was like, okay, it's my turn now. And I had Spence and I think Siobhan behind me. And I was just like, I'm just going. I didn't realize the try line was there. And then maybe when I was over the try line, I was like, ah, that's the try line. I think we scored. So it was, no, it was pretty great. Uh, it was good. To, that was my first try, so it was good. On the far side of the pitch, and the ball has gone into touch. Surely it's time, it's time, the it's time. And the yes. referee has blown the full time whistle. And it's Ireland who oh, have beaten France by five points. What an incredible victory by an incredible team. We had to be on our toes, but you know, we were delighted to get the win out of it. Great game to go. Growing up 
you know, the, the opportunity to ever meet the president of the country was always something that national heroes would do and you know these group these group of girls really are national heroes. It was amazing to see the support um, from, from our own government and to see himself there and and uh, on national was a women's day as well. I mean what else could you ask for? I mean it was it was an amazing, amazing day and it's it's one of the top memories that I'll, I'll never forget. I think I enjoyed the, fir the first two minutes of the, of the victory and uh, the place going wild and all I could think was Italy you know, in X amount of days, and I went, how are we going to get these girls down and then back up again? Happy St. Patrick's Day to you, and we hope it may become even happier. All eyes today on Ireland's women's rugby team. They know victory will secure their first ever Grand Slam. We, we obviously realised how big it was, but I think we were quite relaxed and calm going into the game. In the bus journey to it, there's four or five of us that sit down at the back of the bus and we tell jokes, like that's our routine. And it wasn't any different, to be honest. And Everybody else was in their little zone, but we just tried to keep it as, as normal as possible. The hype, the interest nationally, um, to have the, the match broadcast live, um, to have so many people travelling from Ireland to come and support us play in this massive game. I remember coming out to do some kicks before the guards came in for the warm-ups and there was tricolours the whole way down the, the side of the stand. It was phenomenal, you know, there was, there was a lot of family members and friends travelled to Milan and the support that we had in Milan was superb. I mean, there was one girl, an ex-international, travelled from New Zealand for the game. When the girls changed her honeymoon to come over and, you know, just things like that. We make choices to be involved, but they make sacrifices to come and support us. You set the terms, they don't. The team talk, again, you know, it was inspirational and it was just what was necessary for us to go out and, uh, and do our job. We take it to them. That's basically the feeling that was in the dressing room, like it's, it's time to leave whatever expectations everyone has, else has of us and our own expectations of ourselves. Let's put that out there now and let's put what we're really made of as a team out there, especially in the conditions that it was in. The weather came into play so we had, did have to change. We, didn't, we knew the weather was going to change, we didn't realise how bad it was going to be. It was cold, it was snowy, you know, uh, conditions were miserable. But we had a job to do and, and we were there to do the job, so. We need to put the head down. Good afternoon, everybody. A very happy St. Patrick's Day to you. And we are looking forward to a terrific encounter. There is a wonderful atmosphere. There is so much at stake, and you can see on those faces the emotion of what this day means. As a player, I might never get the chance again to play, a, you know, play for a Grand Slam and win the Grand Slam. So. That was pressurising, that wasn't, that's, I think, was the real nervous sort of energy. That's where it came from. We knew Italy were going to be a threat physically, defensively. We knew they were going to be incredibly hard to break down because of the weather conditions. And then the referee has seen the infringement at the breakdown. Not hanging around. Sends it on its way, and the flags go up in Italy. As we approach two minutes on the clock, have the early lead. And that won't do much for the Irish nerves. I never doubted for one second that we could win it and we should win it. But it was a matter, I think, after about 20, 25 minutes again, I was like, OK, right, we need to start getting our penalties in here because this is going to be one of those games. Maybe an opportunity for Ireland to draw level. As Neve Briggs lines up her first attempt of the afternoon. And the touch judges were happy back in 
It came and over it popped, and congratulations to Neve Briggs. The conditions that she had underfoot to put over those kicks was horrific, and for any kicker to be a tough task. But again, that's, that's Briggsy's gig, and she does it well. The supporters that are here are on their feet in Ireland. Go through the phases one after the other. Maybe now Muldoon considers allowing the back line have a go, but the referee has awarded Ireland another penalty. Briggs lines this up, this to give Ireland the lead. And it's there, it's there. And Ireland, in search of a ground slam, hit the front for the first time in this game. Ten and a half minutes into the second half, it's Italy three, Ireland six. Those penalties, you know, you don't have many chances. I think she missed, she got two out of the three on the day. And, you know, knee Briggs is knee Briggs, you know, just rock. Just focus on the ball going over the bar and, and hopefully then it does it. But, um, you know, yeah, it's definitely a, a factor of the game that I've really worked on this year in terms of trying to mentally prepare for it. Um, but, you know, it's not often that you get to be in those positions. So uh, I'd missed the kick earlier on in the game. So um, it's my ability to be able to put that behind me now and, and focus on the next one, which has kind of served me better this year. One minute left, so it'll be down to the referee for that extra time, but Ireland are holding their discipline. The Italians, though, are inching forward. And I think the defining moment for me was, well, I think we had about 20, 20 phases, and it was literally right in front of the post. Like, uh, we were defending, and Italy kept going and going and going, and then I think I remember Joy, she reached over to rob the ball, and it was like, oh no, this is going to be either to them or against them. And we got it, like, so the penalty was against Italy and for us, and I think that was the final moment of the game, it was amazing. I remember I went in and I just wrapped my, my hands around that ball, I made sure I stayed on my, my feet, and the lo and behold, the whistle went. We got the penalty, and I remember just feeling so relieved. What was portrayed was the real grit and determination that the players have. Um, and for me, standing on the sideline watching that, it's an immensely proud moment. I was actually on the bench at the time. I was sitting there not looking at the match. I was so nervous. I was like, this, just going, please, God, just let the whistle go. I think everything kind of slowed down in my head. I could just see the ball, and it was traveling slowly. When the ball went out and the, the referee blew the whistle, to me, it felt like a long time. I was like, that isn't full time. And then it went. And is that it? Yes, it is. Ireland are the Grand Slam champions. Final whistle. Just, I did it. Took a long time to come. And uh, just very proud of myself. And uh, the girls off sleep. And, uh, and it kind of, you, you think back, back home. To Nicola, my wife, three kids. You get a little bit selfish, you know, you go, yep, yeah, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna enjoy this. These next 10, 15 minutes, I'm really gonna enjoy it. And that's what I did. Absolutely, it was, it was a huge, pivotal, proud moment in my life. There's so much respect there for him. Um, he's a great, great coach. I truly believe that, you know, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have achieved what, we, what we've achieved this year only, only for, for Goose and, and his, his own approach. The tears will flow and the emotion will come, and so it should. We bolted onto the pitch. I'd say that's the fastest I ran all season, was to get to the very side of the pitch over to the girls. Elation, I, I just completely burst into tears. Then going straight over to where my dad and my family were, and um, yeah, it was just, like even now, when I think about it, 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 it makes the hairs on my neck stand up, because um, that, they're memories that I never, ever want to forget. Uh, it wasn't pretty, but it was committed, and it was courageous. And it is a wonderful day for Irish women's rugby. Then all the other emotions start to flow, like you've huge satisfaction, joy. You know, then you're starting to meet people and their family and friends are so happy as well that you're, you just suddenly are overcome with a whole array of emotions. I've always said this, you know, that it wasn't just the, the squad that was involved this year. And I think it's important that people realise that Every single member that was involved in the Irish women's squad since the very, very first year that it was established, and that was that that win was down to them. And you know they laid the foundations, and we were there to to, to celebrate. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Ireland 
the Six Nations champions for 2013. What a day. It was important that um, Linny and Joy Neva were with me as well. Like, every, everyone on the team has as much right to lift it, but, you know, sometimes I'm saying, what does the captain do? Like, without the girls, I'm nothing. So it was important they were beside me. It was amazing, amazing bar, bar a near concussion from Fiona Coughlin who lifted the trophy for the first time and she whacked me in the forehead and I don't know if you realise, well that trophy's bloody heavy like. <laughs> I'm like a unicorn, I had this big massive horn in my head but um, yeah, other than that it was amazing. And there's one picture that I keep on, that I have and I cherish and I look at the whole time and it just completely encapsulates what it is and it's just myself joining Fee in the front with it with the trophy and all the girls and the back and every single, every one of their faces tells a different story and just, it's a hugely amazing, emotionally special thing, it's a phenomenal thing. I remember every second of those last, the last 20, 15 minutes of that sort of celebration. Keela, the Irish, the Irish group were actually on the flight, so they we had a little bit of a sing song on the way home. It was it was it just it topped off a really fantastic couple of days. This is the best trip I've ever been on. We had said goodbye to Lynn the night before when we were going to bed because she was flying to London the next morning. She had to go back to work. I got into Gatwick at like nine o'clock. I was supposed to be in work for 11. I literally got into the arrivals hall and I was like, what am I doing here? What am I doing here? So I rang my boss. She didn't pick up um, to ask her, could I not be there? And then I just went straight to the Aer Lingus flights desk and I was like, please just get me on the next flight home. <laughs> so 500 quid later, I was on a flight. I was ringing my boss going, oh, I'm not coming into work. And I was just there waiting for the girls to come in at one o'clock. So yeah, it was well worth it. Jeez, why would you miss that? That girl is a machine and she is just the epitome of, she envelops the whole spirit of Irish rugby, Irish women's rugby to a T. It was the first time I never had to show my passport going through security. <laughs> it was, yes, Mr. Doyle. <laughs> and the whole team were just rushed through, people carrying your bags and everything. I went, well, that was exceptional. We were told there was quite a big crowd out the front and uh, we were told um, just to be prepared, but nothing really prepares you for something like that. And I always, my goal was always to, you know, enjoy the moment of walking out through with a, with a bit of silverware. You know, this the silverware that means everything to every sports person. And walking through those doors, you know, holding a cup up, that, that was my dream. And uh, it happened. From early morning gym sessions before going to work to evening sessions after work, giving up, you know, so many weekends of their lives, so many family occasions um, and for them to reap that reward was was so so special it was really emotional um, you know it was just kind of like a kind of a realization that people were supporting us that we really didn't realize that were behind us like and i think going talking to people from that the amount of people that actually watched the game and i really couldn't get over the interest that people had in it it was brilliant Next goal is to retain, retain that Grand Slam. The thing that I have learned from playing with the girls has been our teamwork and our unity as a group. That in itself has helped us win the Grand Slam. Yes, the great training, yes, the opportunity we be given, but without that team spirit, there's no way we would have won that Grand Slam. I want us to be better as a team for next year. Uh, from a rugby perspective, definitely more determined because I don't want us to be a one-hit wonder that went off and won a Six Nations and didn't play well the next year. Like, we have to build on this and we have to get better. Our end goal, undoubtedly, is the World Cup next year, 2014, in Paris. And that, that's our end goal. New Zealand will always be a hard feat. We've never had an opportunity to play against New Zealand. And I, I know fact that a lot of the girls will be extremely excited about playing against um, these true professionals. I believe we can get to the semi-finals this year. And after that, who knows, like really at that point, if you can get into top four in the world, anything, anything is possible. I want to win, I want to win every match that I go out and play. And, um, you know, I think that the Grand Slams showed me that anything can happen. And, you know, if you prepare well and, and, and train well, um, I don't see why we can't be in there with a proper shout at it. 
I know top six will be will be the um, will be the goal. But as you saw last year, the goal was to qualify for the World Cup. Um, in the Six Nations, they not only qualified for the World Cup, they won the Triple Crown, the Championship and the Grand Slam. So this, this group of players will be striving for, for greatness. It's, it's absolutely phenomenal what's happened. And it's, it's a credit to the girls, the way they conduct, conducted themselves going through, through the process. And they are role models. And they know they are role models. And, and they act like role models. And that, that, that's all good. Because there are young girls who look up to these people. And... Um, it's onwards and upwards for women's rugby. It's, it's brilliant. It's brilliant to see that that we were invited. We, the, we got to go to the corporate box and to 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 be honoured with going out there at halftime. It was it was a privilege. Everything's been hugely positive. People's reaction to us getting awards. It's it's hugely positive and. I hope that it just changes people's perception of women in sport, not even just rugby players, but women in sport, and that we get behind women in sport a little bit more and get kids out playing. We're a sports mad nation, but I think we need to just get more people involved in sports as opposed to just being supporters. But I'd like to think that it's done great, great, huge achievements for women's sport. I think women's sport has to be backed uh, an awful lot more uh, going forward. Dream come true. I just get emotional even to, even talking about it. Um, I can't explain the, the feelings of winning a Grand Slam, putting in so much hard work to have people know that there is a women's rugby team and to ha see young girls wanting to play rugby. For me, it's just it's just a dream come true, and um, long may it live. We've given so much to it. You know, I've given a decade of my life to try and and, and achieve this, and to actually do it. I, I just know the effect that it's going to have for other girls and other teams in the future and it just means an awful lot.